Hello, I'm Matt and welcome to Badger Workshop. Since being in this space, I've not had a bin and I think it's about time I sort that out. So I bought this cheap plastic one off Amazon. Now I could say that's the problem solved and this could be the world's shortest and most boring woodworking video. But I'm at least going to make this video longer. I'm going to build a wooden enclosure for the bin and I've got all these strips of wood to use. Now it'd be a lot easier to build this out of some sheet goods or even just some wider material, but I need to use all this stuff up. So first I'm gonna plane it down and then get it glued up into panels. Getting all these panels glued up was by far the most time consuming part of this project, as you never have enough clamps to get as many done as you need at a time. So I spent a couple of days getting them glued up in between doing other projects. When I glued them up, I tried to get one face as flat as possible, but you never get it perfect. So when I had a good pile of these glued up, I could then run them across the planer and get one face cleaned up. Then I ran them through the thicknesser to clean up the parallel surface. All these panels are around the 25 centimeter mark, because that's the maximum capacity of my planer thicknesser. But unfortunately, the bin is a bit wider than that. So I ripped one of the boards in half and glue it to a couple of the full width ones. Then I'll have a couple of panels wide enough to be the front and the back of my bin enclosure. It really does feel like most of this project is just gluing panels up, and if I'd made it out of some MDF or ply, I'd have had it done by now. But I do like to use up bits I've already got, especially for shop projects. I can use the bin as reference and cut a piece down that's gonna be the door and also what's gonna hold the bin in place. It's a bit wider than the capacity of my mic saw, so I had to flip it over to finish the cut. So I want the bottom of the door to have a platform for the bin to sit on. So I mark out how deep I need that to be, and then I can get it cut down on the mic saw as well. And while I'm at this saw, I'm gonna cut down a couple of pieces that are gonna act as sides. Now I can get it all put together, and I'm gonna use PVA glue and bread nails for that. This is one of my typical I have no real plan projects. I'm making this bit first as it needs to be big enough to hold the bin. And when this is done, then I can move on to the next bit using this first bit as reference to determine the rest of the sizes. Basically, that's a complicated way of saying I'm just winging it. So with the door slash bin carrier made, I can then work on the back of the cabinet. It needs to be as wide as the door and some bits of wood for the side. So I just use those couple of bits of wood to represent what the side piece is going to be. And then I can get it ripped down on the table saw. I work out how tall I want the whole of the cabinet to be. And then I can get that cut down on the miter saw plus a couple of side bits as well. Now I can get this put together. So again, glue and brads, just the back with the two sides nailed on. As it is, this is a very flimsy structure. So I wanna put some supporting pieces in. So I take the internal measurement, set up a stop block and get some cut down. One goes at the bottom, at the front, and this also gives me some material to put some hinges in later. I get another one at the back and then I get some at the top and at the top of the back as well. And this will also give me some material to be able to screw the top onto. And talking of the top, when I was gluing up panels, I did one with the orientation of the wood the other way, so it's a bit more chunky. And I'm gonna use this as the top. But first, I need to cut down a couple of pieces and get another panel glued up. Thankfully, this is the last one for this project. Whilst I wait for that to dry, I can work on installing the door. So I get it put in place, then I had a rummage to see what hinges I had on hand, I'm going to use these surface mount ones. I use my self-centering drill bit to drill some holes, and then I use some gold screws just to temporarily attach this. So how it is at the moment, the door will be able to open all the way, and I don't really want it to do that. This is as far as it needs to go, so I'm just going to mark out there. 
I get a bit of scrap wood that can go in here and act as a stop and I'm just going to cut it to the same angle. I can now get it installed and I want to inset the thickness of the door. So it's going to do two things. When the door's opened it's going to stop it opening too far and when it's closed it's going to stop it going back too far. From the inside I drill a few holes going up and this is going to help me attach the top later on. I give the main body, the door and the top a sand down and then I can get the top attached from the inside going into the top with a few screws. To finish it I'm going to use some hard wax oil. I bought this for another project but the colour was too dark so I thought I'd try and use it up on some shop projects. And after wiping off any excess I don't mind the colour on this at all. I've taken the door off to apply the finish and now it can go back on but this time I used the black screws that actually came with the hinges. So the last job is I need a way of opening the door. So I'm just going to cut down this scrap of leather to use as a pull. I use a rotary punch to put a hole in either end of the piece. I find the centre of the top of the door and mark the position with an awl. I can then fold the bit of leather over, put a brass screw through with a screw cup and get it screwed into place. And that's it all done. Now I can get it under my bench and get the plastic bin put in place. This is a 25 litre bin and there'll be a link down to it below like normal. So now I've got no excuse for throwing rubbish on the floor. That's it all done. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my Patreons. And please subscribe for more videos.